Well, guys, we got a wrench thrown in the gears here this week with the Trump pump, they're calling it. We got the Trump pump going on in the stock market in Bitcoin. I think it's like 87,000 or something like that as I'm making this video. Could be less tomorrow, could be more tomorrow. I have no idea. We don't know where it's going. Uh, some concerns I do have is we also had a Fed rate cut recently last week and yet mortgage rates stay stubbornly high. I kind of feel like the markets are anticipating an inflation, inflationary environment going forward. So that's keeping those elevated, uh, surprising a lot of people. As you guys can see, I'm in Welland Park today down by the Brave Stadium with just a quick, quick video, but a lot to cover. So I'm going to speed through it here. The caution and concern I have with the recent surge in the markets, as I've mentioned before on the channel is, well, people uh, have been up about 40% on their investments. I think the S&P this year, uh, Bitcoin's raging again. So that's, what's that going to do? It's going to put more money in people's pockets, specifically investors, institutional investors. Well, what does that mean for the housing market? Last time we saw a lot of money injected and a lot of profit injected into the system. We know how that ended. There was bidding wars all over the country and that has just about started dying down in most places. So to rein rates back the way they did and to see this kind of uh, pump in the markets is a little concerning to me because things just started equalizing in my opinion. Uh, Southwest Florida here very drastically, you guys know that. So I hope this man seating isn't, isn't too loud in the back there. Uh, when the, in the last boom in 21, 22, the last time crypto was going crazy and Doge was going to the moon, we had bidding wars and regular buyers were getting absolutely crushed by cash investors around here and around the country. My concern is with this new capital injection uh, found money that these people are going to have, it could be even worse potentially when they start buying again, if they start buying again. Now, if institutions and investors start diving back into real estate because they're not seeing returns elsewhere and the prices are attractive compared to what they used to be, I mean, who are they really gonna go up against? At least last time you had to bid against people with loans uh, who had three, two, three, four percent loans. Now people are facing 7% mortgages going up against potential all cash buyers who have just made a ton of money in the markets. I think that's going to leave them to have their pick of the litter, pretty much the run of the mill of whatever area they decide to start purchasing it. That's one consequence I see of this potentially occurring. I don't know if it's gonna go on here in Southwest Florida, but we do have a ton of inventory. So it's ripe for cash purchasers to come in and you know kind of take what they want. The only issue with that is if it's going to be a rental property, you guys know we have a flooded rental market here. So we're gonna have to see how that shakes out. We're over 1,900 rentals in Charlotte County. Finally, I never thought I would see them that high. It just keeps going up, 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 and up. And I thought it would sort of peel back with the hurricane, but it's only increased. And it's not just rental inventory. As you guys know, housing for sale inventory is going up contrary to what I thought would occur here as well. Uh, specifically areas like Northport. Puna Gorda is actually constricted a little bit from last year, but I'm starting to see a lot of uh, homes come on the market there as well. For example, Northport's inventory was 35% higher in October than it was two years ago in October of 2022. In fact, currently you would have to go back basically 13 years to January of 2011 to have the same amount of single family homes on the market as you do now in Northport, Florida. So we've got a 13 year high of active listings in Northport coming into season. We're not even in season yet. And guys, that's decreased. That's actually down about 15% from what it was in the peak of the summer. So the listings have contracted in Northport and they're still at 13 year highs. And they are still building all over Northport and all over Southwest Florida. I mean, the amount of new construction listings that I'm getting every day is insane. And they're competitively priced, guys. I mean, we're talking, like there's some homes in Westport. I was in Westport last weekend. They're two stories, 2,300 square feet with a two car garage. And they're talking like 338. Now you do get a CDD and you get a HOA fee in Westport, but I'm like, man, that's a big house. Uh, Holiday Builders is building some three car garage homes, three twos. I think they're 1,500 square feet. 
kind of around that price point, maybe even less. So it's hard to compete with resale and it's gonna keep continuing. As you guys know, that's what's been mainly pushing our prices down is just new construction like here in Welland Park is <laughs> making it very hard to sell your house for the prices you used to obtain. And let me tell you guys, resale sellers are still getting aggressive. It has been harder for me to find massive price drops, but I do see them occasionally. I am due for a price drop video. And unfortunately, I went on a listing appointment last week, and that was sort of the scenario that had happened. Some seller in the neighborhood, just days prior to me doing my market analysis on a property, had undercut their price, and the house was listed for $392,000. They closed at $340,000, $52,000 off this home. Now the rest of the homes in the community, which are very similar and comparable, this was actually better than some of them, are priced in the 380s to 400s. And this just brought it down to about 340. The price per square foot shifted dramatically. We've mentioned it before. It only takes one person in the neighborhood, unfortunately. And that's still going on. At the flood damaged homes, uh, people are asking me, is that affecting the market here? They're in the, kind of a league of their own, so not really. It's not really affecting them. The uh, interesting thing is I did see a really nicely priced one, which I'll go through here. All right, guys, so this is the home I'm referring to. It's 350,000 Gulfview Road in Puna Gorda. No reasonable offer refused. Exceptional deep water sailboat access home. So as you guys can see, this is not a very elevated home. Uh, the dock is a little small. The actual water frontage is a little small. I'll show you that on the overhead, but you're seeing here you're going to have to do work you're going to have to finish all this remediation and repairs but even at 350 i don't know i don't think it's unreasonable as you guys can see the location is great you are out in the water immediately the real killer is going to be that water frontage there that is tough so what did Zillow think this was worth in the peak about 446 and before flooding they had it at 337 so it's actually a little higher they're asking 350. We saw this on another Inglewood property I showed you guys last week that was North Beach Road that is as of time as of the time of this video still for sale. I thought that might go pen. I said this probably go pending but only 11 days. It's got a lot of activity on it too. So when looking at these houses, guys, you can't put them in the same class as uh, new construction or resale. That I, like, I would never use this as a comp for any house in the area that was not flooded. Speaking of new construction, I've talked about builders a lot in the past and kind of wonky, weird gimmicky things I was seeing going on. It's been kind of a while since I've been able to report on some of that stuff. It's calmed down quite a bit, but I did see another strange one recently. There was a uh, new build community opening here in Southwest Florida. And the it wasn't supposed to open for another several months. And just out of nowhere, all of a sudden, a big push uh, started to appear on social media and other channels to show that this was gonna open early and here was your chance to get in. And we're doing special events and we're doing, uh, we're gonna release pricing in phases. You know, FOMO, we're building FOMO. I respect it. It's a business model, I understand it. And nothing's built yet in this community, by the way. It's just sand and dirt. You know, the streets are barely laid out. Uh, one friend of the channel I recently showed places to likened it to a mud pit. So <laughs> it's just mud pit stage. You know, there's all conceptual things for amenities, but there's nothing there to look at. So they decided that for single family homes, they were gonna release just two on launch day. And you could get in a lottery by sending in a check and making an offer. And you know, people would be randomly picked in this lottery, which when's the last time you guys heard about that? That's something like, that's a relic of 2021 if i've ever heard one so i thought it was just a little in poor taste but again i don't run that business and it, they must do it because it works so imagine my surprise when three days later they opened up the entire community for sale every home site i'm like well what was the point of the lottery so did it not go the way you guys planned i didn't i didn't understand it it's uh but it's just kind of nutty stuff that I've seen, I like to keep you guys posted about in case you run into it. All right, that's gonna do it for me today, guys. If you like this video, give me a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.